All on Cooper CPAs, located in the heart of East Nashville, offer a wide variety of tax services for individuals and businesses. Contact them at 615-257-0646 and visit their website, allcooper.com, for a full list of services. Today's show is brought to you by locally owned and operated Highland Rim Speedway. Highland Rim Speedway is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year with great short track door-to-door -door stock car racing in a safe, family-friendly atmosphere. Visit their website at highlandrim.com. Microcasting for your city. Talkopolis. And welcome back everybody to Pit Pass. Joe Williams, Larry Woody. Larry, I understand uh, you were kind of motoring around the other day and actually ran past USA Motor Machine over on Cleveland and went, hey, I know those guys. That's right. They've been nice to us over the years. They certainly have. But USA Motor Machine, it, uh, if you need some engine work on anything from uh, what you're driving to work every day, what we call your daily driver, or something mama's getting the groceries in, or the old soccer mom van, go by and see the guys. They can do it all. At USA Motor Machine. We talked a little bit about high, at uh, Fairgrounds. Let's talk about Highland Rim, Larry. They've come out with a bit of a, of a big, big announcement uh, earlier this week, and I, I think they've told everybody. We may well be breaking it here, but the rim... Let's go ahead. Danica Patrick and Dario Franchitti are going to be racing there this year. Larry, you oh. just you beat me to it. <laughs> Why do you do that? I mean, I've got the whole press release I'll take it here. back. Go ahead. No. <laughs> but you know, stranger things have happened. But actually, what they announced earlier, or about to announce, I should say, told us about earlier, is that the Southern Superstars are coming to the rim, the traveling series where Mark Day's been the, the champion, the last, I guess, three of the last four years. I know the last couple. Um, Davey Coble drives with the bunch or several other local guys who will be there. That ought to be a heck of a show. And what really excites me about the Southern Superstars coming in is they will run a race that is a good distance for their cars and they understand that over a hundred laps, caution's got to count. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, a, it's an exciting series coming to an exciting track. It doesn't get much better than that. You know, with all the improvements they've done up there, I am, I am really, really anxious to see Buddy and them, Buddy and, uh, and Roger and, and Jerry get a full year under their belt, Larry, because mm -hmm. they've made the proper improvements in the right places. They made a few changes in, uh, in their rules package and a couple things here and there, and, and they're mm -hmm. Their theory and their planning is pretty solid. Yeah. And it's going to be an interesting season. As you said, they got a few races in last, at the end of last season, last year, and gave fans, I think, and the media sort of a taste in the drivers, competitors, what, what's coming. And this will be the first full season. I think it'll be fascinating to see how the first full year goes. I, I feel good about it. I feel optimistic about it. I wouldn't have said that two or three years ago, but I really haven't, having worked yeah. with some of these people and been around them. I kind of, maybe their optimism and enth enthusiasm rubs off, but I feel good about the season at Highland Rim. You spent years at the pinnacle, covering the pinnacle of our sport, and, and, I, and it, used to, it used to drive me crazy because I was trying to figure out, uh, and it took me a while to understand, you love them both, but I think the grassroots level is maybe your real love. You would come and you would stay late on a Saturday night to cover the fairgrounds of the rim and then get up at four o'clock on Sunday morning and drive to Talladega. Yeah. Well, it was just fun, Joe. It's kind of the equivalent would be in football. You watch a great high school football player playing in, like, like you were, your, your high school days. Then, then he advances to college. He becomes a great college player. And then hopefully someday advances up to the NFL. And it's the same way. It's just fun to watch these grassroots racers like a Casey Atwood or Sterling Marlin run some of the smaller tracks, work their way up to the mid-levels, and then someday win a Daytona 500, as Sterling did. That's, it's just, uh, you know. It doesn't have to be a sports story. That's a kind of a, a human. Uh, yeah. A, you wrote a, a book a, about that. Triumph of a, the human spirit kind yeah. of story. And anybody would, would like that. You wrote a book, Pure I Sterling. Did. Yeah. I actually still have an autographed copy. Can yeah. you still, yeah. Amazon still got that? They are. And when I, I, I sign a lot of them, my wife says when I'm dead, they'll be worth a lot of money. So, <laughs> but, uh, but no, seriously, back to the well, grassroots. Tell, tell, <laughs> tell her to give me a call. I've got, <laughs> you know, you I, I can help I'll, her out. I'll bring you one. <laughs> but no, that's what's intriguing. I think about the grassroots level racing like Highland Rim, Joe. First of all, it's amateur racing, as we've said so many times. These guys are out there racing for the sheer love of racing. Also, you never know when you might see some kid out there and, hey, 
kid. Look at that kid. What's his name? Atwood. Or who's that over there? That's, is that that Marlin kid? And Sterling's got a grandson, incidentally, mm -hmm. coming out. So you never know when you go to Highland Rim and you see these people out there racing, the younger guys, you might be looking at the next Daryl Waltrip or, or Sterling Marlin. Mm -hmm. that, that's the fun of the, the grassroots. And it used to be more common. You could say that. Yeah. Now it's now it's. You In don't the old days, there was a good chance. Yeah. It now you, you now don't necessarily want to see the kids. You want to see the checkbook. Yeah. And it, nowadays it's sort of a long shot too because we they just aren't coming up through the ranks. But you never know. You, exactly. You know, the, the NASCAR's got to fill these shoes from somewhere. You know, a lot of the older drivers. Jeff Gordon's 41 for crying out loud. Seemed like he just started yesterday. But these guys, this generation is going to move, be moving on. They've got to come from somewhere. So why not tracks like the the fairgrounds and Highland Rim. And I think this generation, Larry, will quit, I say quit, will retire earlier mm. than what we've seen in the past when a Bobby Allison went to, you yeah. know, Harry Gant goes to 50, 51. Yeah. Bobby went to 54 and would have yeah. kept going. Yeah. Had I, I, think, for the yeah, accident. I, I don't think Jeff Gordon, he's 41, I don't think he'll race, you know, too many more years. But you never know. Like Richard Petty used to say, he said, when you're a race driver and you're winning, you're having too much fun to quit, so it's hard to walk away. When you're losing, you don't want to go out when you're down like that, so you want to hang around till, you, till your career perks up. He said, the bottom line is you never quit. That's right. <laughs> so, you're either wanting to get back. Uh, kind of like it, a bad drug, you know? It is. You, can't, you, you don't want to get out when you're on top because you're having too much fun. You don't want to get out on the bottom because you don't want to end your career that way. So as Petty said, it's just hard to get out. Old sport riders are the same way. Speaking of, uh, speak, yeah, it went, yeah, so so we're old radio guys yeah. and, and announcers. I mean, don't feel bad. Um, talking about Highland Rim a little bit, combination. A lot of times, if you look back over history, you see guys who have raced at the fairgrounds, who have raced at Highland Rim, who who've raced at uh, some other facilities back in the day when uh, when the Smyrna track was open or the Riverview track in Carthage was open, uh, and you. You find these folks who maybe don't have that desire to go much further. They're at the grassroots level, Larry, they're, and they're happy right they're there. They're content where they are. And, and they're very good yeah. at what they and do. And having fun. It, yeah. That's their golf game. Yeah. And, and one of those guys around here was a fellow by the name of Jimbo Vance. Yeah. We lost Jimbo a couple nights ago and understand the services were yesterday. Um, as we take this on a Wednesday. It's today, actually. Yeah. Thursday. Thursday's tomorrow. Okay. We take this on Wednesday the 29th. Services are tomorrow on the 30th in Mount Juliet, 31st. I'm lost on my dates. Thank you. I get to talking about Jimbo and I forget dates. It's hard for me to say this is the date for this. You know, last week we talked about Joe Carver. Joe, I, I just knew him by, by name, you know, having covered some of the lower divisions, but you and Terrell knew him well, and Terrell Davis was telling an interesting story, and I, I didn't know this, that he served as uh, David Sisko's crewman, and, and maybe the, the, the entire pit crew. When, when Sisko, I, I covered David back in the days when he was running cup races, and I didn't know this, but he just kind of rounded up some friends from around home here and ran, and one of them was, was Jimbo, and Terrell said he might have been at times the only crewman that yeah. David Sisko had. I was going to say, David Sisko uh, was a former track champ at Nashville, went on to, yeah. to run a bunch of what is now cup stuff. Yeah. Um, Darrell was telling us that, that at one point, Jimbo was his only crewman, yeah. still in high school. They'd load the car up in the morning. Jimbo would drive it to school, park the, the rig. Now, you got to understand at that time, it was probably... If it was an enclosed trailer, it was it was a big deal. Probably wasn't even enclosed. No. Probably just sitting on a but open trailer. He parked it at school. As soon as school was out, he'd take off for the racetrack. And that's what they do. They go to the racetrack, they'd race, and he'd come home. He and David uh, would David yeah. Cisco would work on the car themselves, maintain it themselves, and and go racing. Russ Thompson worked with him a bunch too. Jimbo may be better known uh, for his exploits in karting. Mm -hmm. He was awfully good in a go kart, but uh, set some records at several different places in a mini modified. And the one thing you could always count on with Jimbo Vance was the man was going to meet you with a big smile and a strong handshake. And uh, positive attitudes are hard to find sometimes, and his is one that's going to be missed. And people like that, Joe, are what made Kevin the sport so much fun back then, the, the, the good people, the good friends, the associations you relationships you made and uh, those, those good stories you don't uh, we're, we're losing too many of those people nowadays last week is Joe Carver and this week uh, Jimbo Vance and just as you said the old, the old gang's trimming down yeah and that's not a good thing Larry we'll be back next week with more pit pass I believe you're coming back I'll you? be here you'll be here I may just stay here I go get a cot in the back so. we can arrange that <laughs> we can no, arrange I'll be that. here one thing we're going to look into this week We'll leave you on this one. Electric cars, hmm. are they raceable? Hmm. 
they may be more raceable than you think. And we may have the answer for that. And we've already got robot drivers, so. That's right. It's natural. More right. on that next week. <laughs> You're a video gamer. Here's the real world at it. No, seriously, uh, some news upcoming on cars powered by electricity. But that'd make the neighbors at the fairgrounds happy. They wouldn't have to listen to all that stuff. They, they would know? lull them to sleep at night with the purring of the of motor. The purring of the motor. <laughs> you know, that's the one we need to get out of here on. For Larry Woody, I'm Joe Williams. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Pit Pass. We'll see you next time.